Hey, what's up, guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my Vegas Golden Knights franchise mode series. And in this episode, it is yet again another battle of the Titans. For whatever reason, it has been a theme in NHL 19 for us, whether it be this Vegas series or the Golden Seals series, where just the inner division competition level, for lack of a better term, has been ridiculous. And perhaps our biggest competition throughout the past few years has been the Vancouver Canucks. And now here we are in the second round of the playoffs, and we will be squaring off with the Canucks yet again. Regardless of how this team looks, I'm a bit afraid, because we all know this sim engine, it's a toss-up. Although, that's that's not to say that I don't have faith in this team. I think you guys do, too. Uh, Socks, Elijah Lackey's my spirit animal. I You know, that's a good choice. Adama Traore loves this team. I love this team. It's amazing. Uh, that said, getting to a couple of your, uh, a couple more of your comments before getting into this. Uh, Tuka Rask fan brought this up. A couple of you disagreed that, or agreed, not disagreed. I, yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. I'm leaving this part in. A couple of you agreed uh, that there have been some audio issues, and I tested out a couple of different settings. We'll see if that continues to happen. Hopefully not. Uh, but definitely a side effect of it being the new computer. I'm sure it's just one setting that's off that's causing the audio to jump every now and then. So we'll see what happens as far as this video is concerned, maybe a couple of others uh, that we do in the next few days, and I'll mess around with some more settings if need be. And aside from that, really, there are a couple of comments that I could bring up, but a lot of them are kind of saying the same thing, and that mainly has to do with the future of this team. Whether it be that this is the start of something very special with this club and, you know, in terms of potential for multiple titles, and of course the near future where we still have that big question or a couple of questions looming overhead of who stays and who goes. But needless to say, I think the main person right now that people are focusing on, and perhaps rightfully so after the season he has had, is Cody Glass, who has won over quite a few of you. Uh, nominations for him to be captain heading into next season, and I don't know if I can disagree. I mean, he has one year left on that deal, great contract, and even then, once this contract's up, I don't know how much money he'll be asking for, but in the regular season, he was tremendous, uh, and in the postseason thus far, point of game player, but again, coming off of a 94-point season. For now, though, we have to focus on the task at hand, that being the Canucks. Hopefully, the next episode isn't where we have to make these tough decisions on who stays and who goes. Hopefully, the next episode is our Western Conference final matchup against either Chicago or Arizona. But to get there, oh, to get there, we have to beat the Vancouver Canucks. Let's take a look at what we're up against, shall we? Let's do this. Let's see just how good of a team we are up against. And yeah, <laughs> this, oh, this team. All right, so we start off, top line, Taylor Hall had four points in the first five games of the playoffs. And you know what here, I don't really care about the point totals, I care about these numbers here. But Taylor Hall, oh, uh, yeah, we'll keep it there, 92 overall, Taylor Hall. Pablo Beagle. 90 overall, former 7th overall selection in the 2021 draft. It is currently 2025, so yeah, he's been around for a bit, and he was a point of game in the first round. Rounding out that top line, Brock Besser, 6 points in 5 games. I mean, it's, it's Brock Besser. What else do you expect? That top line is disgusting by every, every stretch of the imagination, and it's, <laughs> God, it's going to be a problem. We go to the second line. Jonathan Dolan is there, 86 overall. Look at his numbers right now. Pedersen, 90 overall. Capped out of the 90, had four points in the first round. 99 offensive awareness, by the way. And the right wing, Cole Lind, 83 overall. Three points in five games thus far for the Channel Hall of Famer. At the very least, in the Rebuilding Hockey Town series. Third line, Antoine Roussel with Bo Horvat and Eunice Donskoy. Fourth line, Michael Dalcol, Sam Bennett, and Lucas Walmark. The defense, this could be where our chances are uh, made or broken. The defense is really good. <laughs> it's not phenomenal, but it's really good. Olya Levy, 90 overall. 
next to Ahmad Cole, who was a former fifth overall pick in 2020. John Connolly is an 84 overall, former 10th overall selection in 2019. He's with Caden Walker, another 84, who was a fifth round pick, so a pretty good steal there for the Canucks. And the third pair, Essa Lindell with Derek Pouliot. The goaltender, I think we all know, is not... Oh, wow, I thought it was Demko. Is he hurt? He's not hurt. They don't have Demko. Interesting. Interesting. Isaac Burns, a 939 save percentage. A former third-round pick, the 84 overall. Michael DiPietro is the backup. Healthy scratch is Justin Schultz, Andre Schuster, and former Knight, Braden McNabb. Do we have what it takes to beat this team? In terms of goaltending, we certainly have the advantage on paper. Defense, eh, they might have the advantage. Both defense cores are very well-rounded. And offensively, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can say we have the advantage when they have 390 overall players. <laughs> I mean, Besser's an 89 as well. But with what our team accomplished this year, it's not that I'm pessimistic. It's not that I'm like, oh, we're screwed. This could go either way, though. This really could. And I'm very nervous to start this. But we have to. We have to. That's what we're here for. So let's do this. We have home ice advantage. Barely. Thanks to, uh, thanks to one extra win and a couple of extra overtime losses. Uh, let's hold a team meeting. Let's talk, fellas. Let's talk. Let's get that motivation going. It's game one of the series tonight, boys. And it doesn't matter who you are. You need to play harder than as a team. That, that's not a bad answer. I have to view the big picture here. Nope, don't view the big picture. Whether it's uh, this game or game seven, I need to get the best idea every night without fail. That's also true. Our turn in, nope, don't, don't talk about, don't talk about the thing. We focus on the task at hand. Play hard and as a team, damn it. And nobody likes that. <laughs> we're not going to play as a team. We're all individuals and we're going to just not try. Thanks, team. Appreciate it. That's great. That's the response I like to see from a locker room. Let's get this going. Game one of the second round against Vancouver. Oh, boy. Here we go. First period, and we get the opening goal. It's Marvin Mason. They outshot us 11-10. We have the difference maker, but a big goal there for Mason, who I still can't believe he's done as well as he has. I thought he might be one of those guys that we get rid of, and he's developed into one hell of a player. Second period, Good lord. So Tate Dwyer makes it 2 to nothing. Sam Bennett gets a goal back. Eight seconds later, Kirill Datsuk restores the two-goal advantage. God damn, that was a hell... That was under... That was all under two minutes, by the way. 3-1, 23 shots to 19 as we head into the third period. What's gonna happen here? Early power play chance for the Canucks. And Pablo Beagle scores. They're right back in it. As we need to hope... The Vasilevsky can shut the door. Elijah Lackey and Kirill Datsuk again. Huge, huge goals there from Lackey and Datsuk. It's 5-2 to two with four and a half remaining, barring a brutal collapse. That will do it. And there you go. 5-2 is the final. We take game one. I was talking before uh, Lackey and Datsuk decided to score two goals in under a minute that there is a little bit of pressure on Vasilevsky to deliver in this series. He wasn't phenomenal in that first round. Gives up two goals on 25 shots in this game, but thankfully we had five goals on 34 shots in that game. Datsuk, a two-goal night, is your first star. Two points for Dwyer and Lackey, and that is a great way to begin this series. Quite a few players with points. And again, overall, 920. So Vasilevsky holding strong with that 920 save percentage that has somehow been good enough, and that's not good at all. Oh, God, what's the, it's April 20-something, 20-something, 20 and Russell Clausen's out until May 3rd, oh, no, 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 not, not like this, please, not like this, it's April 23rd, and he is out until early May. Oh boy, that that's that's a, just a punch to the gut. Game six, maybe back for game five. We are without Russell Clausen. 
who might be and is one of the better players in the league. Might be. I mean, I, I, there was a comment saying like, "Oh, he might be the best in the league." I would love to agree. <laughs> we'll see just how valuable Russell Clausen is to this team over these next few games when he is not here. It is a big opportunity, not for James Neal, with Chicago being out of the line or out of the playoffs. We need to call somebody up with their lineup not being affected. And between Robertson, Dubé, Bembridge, and Rizzi, those are the best options. And to be honest, Kirill Dotsuk is probably going to be the one that gets bumped up. Although, I don't exactly want to break up that fourth line because they were great. But we're not going to play James Neal. Jason Robertson had a 65-point season. It's not bad. Listed as a depth option. Pretty damn good offensively. Uh, the puck skills are a bit weak, but the senses and the shooting are quite strong. Really good skating as well. Dylan Dubé, I mean, we know he's more of a defensive, kind of physical presence in the lineup as opposed to his offense, but he is a 61-point getter in the AHL. And Hudson Bembridge is the other main option. A 68-point season for him. How did he do? The former first-round pick. One hell of a playmaker. Just really good offensively. He's 24 years old now at this point. Then we also have Zachariah Rizzi, former second-round pick. Had a 59-point season, but 30 goals. So, god damn, there are some... There are some really good options there as far as who we look to call up, who gets the opportunity as Russell Clausen is going to be out. And to be honest, Gertzen might be taking a seat here for Eklund. If he's not at 100%, I'm not going to play him and I'm not going to risk further injury to him. So in terms of these forwards, I, I don't know who gets the call here. Because like I said, if we look at this lineup, I mean, Verbata... Has four points. That fourth line, outside of Fedorov, has been pretty productive. Datsuk and Verbata are a pretty damn good pairing. Now, you could say, well, let's reward Datsuk with uh, higher ice time, and I don't disagree, but why he has that many goals for that shooting category, I don't know. So I kind of don't want to mess with that magic there. So maybe it does make sense to call up somebody and just have him play in place of Claussen. I mean, Russell was our main sniper. And I mean, between Bembridge and Robertson, Bembridge might be the guy. Granted, he's listed as a playmaker. What was Rizzi set up as? As a sniper. Not bad. I'm not too worried about handedness. Robertson, Bembridge, or Rizzi? That is the question. And I think in terms... Man, in terms of the best shot, like crazy accuracy on Bembridge. Bembridge is a little bit more well-rounded than uh than Robertson. I think it's I think it's Hudson Bembridge's chance to shine here. I think it is. He's someone who probably should have been in our lineup for the past season or two, but just given the crazy changes that we've made that hasn't been the case, I think he gets the opportunity. Now the question is, as the third line hasn't exactly been killing it, the second line is what it is. I, I think I'm just going to give Bembridge the chance. I mean, looking at his grades, you can't exactly tell me that he can't fill in. And if we go to uh, three on three, I'm not against this. It might be a bit too big of an opportunity for him, but I'm willing to. I'm willing to try it. And I think, oh, that's right, Gerson was hurt anyway. I forgot about that. Eklund was already in. My bad. One of those little details that can be lost on you when you, you know, have a couple of days in between recording. So let's take one more look. One more look here. At, uh, this being the option here. We could bump up Lackey and Roach. That's the obvious thing. Even Datsuk. But like I said, for some reason, Datsuk just has magic on that fourth line. The third line, not killing it. Second line, not killing it. This might be... The change that we need to get some people going. And I think I think for that reason I am going to make those changes. Bembridge is still going to get quite a bit of playing time. I'm going to go best lines for the moment. We're going to take out Gertzen. And we're going to bring in Eklund. And from there, as far as these combos, I'm honestly not sure. I might just stay with the, uh, with the best lines. I think I'm going to stay with best lines for the moment. It's funny. Uh, well, with the exception of Braunstrom and Eklund, but 
It's funny how it still has Rosita's down there, but I think I think we'll be all right. We do need a better performance out of Provorov. So offensively, Mason Glass, Lackey, it actually has Fotinos up on that higher line. So Fotinos, Goldobin, Dwyer. I think I am still going to have Datsuk on that fourth line. Let's bump over Dwyer. So I'm thinking Dwyer, Goldobin, Roach, Fotino, Suzuki, Bembridge. I think that'll be the way to go. Defensively, as it is, we're going to have changes to the lineup uh, once Gertzen's good to go. Didn't expect to have to make that many changes uh, heading into game two, but let's get into it. After a little bit of a delay, we are without Russell Claussen. How big of a factor will that be as the squad depth is being tested First period of Game 2 is scoreless. 12 shots to 7 in our favor. Nothing doing there, though. We need a big performance out of Vasilevsky, and that's a decent start. Second period, and we jinxed it. Brock Besser has the only goal of this game thus far. As they had 14 shots that period. 24 to 21 now in our favor, but we are down by a goal. We need the offense to step up here. Russell Claussen is the main man. But he's not the only guy who is capable. I have to fight off a sneeze here, and Pablo Vico makes it too, so screw it. I'm sneezing. Hold on. That was brutal. Damn it, but it's okay. Uh, not, what, you know, in fairness, I'm speaking to the sneeze and the game as we lose 2 to nothing. 37 save shutout for an 84 overall goalie. Burns with that shutout. Vassy had a decent game. Our offense didn't show up. So talking about going with the higher rated players, maybe trying to create a little bit of a spark, nothing happened. Nobody could find the back of the net in that game. Gertzen will be back, which is good news, honestly, because I'm going to take a look at maybe changing things back up because we do have some players who are just outright underperforming right now. And that is a pretty damn big factor. So let's see. What can we do here? I think I still want Gerritsen and Norton on different pairings. I want Provorov on that side. So let's go. Let's go with that setup for now. And then forward wise, it's a tough call. But I think we're going to. I don't even know what the hell we're going to do here. Dotsuk back on the fourth line. I want to keep that fourth line unit together. Oh, boy. Boy, boy, boy. All right. Bembridge didn't do much in that game. Lackey, unfortunately, hasn't done much. Three points there, four points there, three points there. We just need players to perform. I think we're going to keep that second line the way it is, but I'm going to give Hudson Bembridge that ice time. Screw it. We'll go with that. I mean, we didn't get anything... Uh, Anything going with Lackey and Roach in the top six? So we'll both drop them back down a line to where they were, and we'll get ready for game three. We are in Vancouver. A strong start, the injury to Claussen, and now we have ourselves a tied series. Not ideal, but we're still in the very early stages. First period of game three, and this is not going well. 12 shots to 10. 2-0 Vancouver, Horvat, and Antoine Roussel. We are in trouble here. Four straight periods without a goal. Second period, make it five straight periods without a goal. And we are in a lot of trouble. We are in a lot of trouble. 22 shots to 20. As we begin the third period, what has happened to our offense without Russell Claussen here? As Derek Pouliot makes it three, Vasilevsky not doing a good enough job. And offensively, there we go, Marvin Mason finally gets us on the board. Offensively, we're being shut down by an 84 overall goalie as Pablo Beagle makes it four. And the Vancouver Canucks are going to come back and take a 2-1 to one series lead. And I think you can tell by the tone of my voice, I'm a little bit concerned here about our chances. Not just for the lack of of Russell Claussen being in the lineup, as I misclicked, sorry, so we won't get to see the three stars, but just, we have so many underperforming players, Vasilevsky absolutely being one of them, Claussen will not be back for this next game, and I 
just don't know. Bembridge has been a complete non-factor, so his opportunity is gone. Unfortunately, it's a little bit harsh, but I need to try and get someone into this lineup that can do something, and it's going to be Robertson that gets the call up here. And then from there, I honestly, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know, because outside of Marvin Mason, who can you honestly say has been like, yeah, he's been great. I mean, if Andre Vasilevsky finishes this postseason with under a 920 save percentage, he's gone. I'll make the most of his trade value, which will more than likely just be flipping him for picks, which wasn't the plan. I planned on keeping him here and having him be our goalie, but if he's going to underperform to this extent, then he's, he's not the guy for us, clearly. And, of course, a lot of people talk the balancing effects, which does appear to be true, especially in past years. The better your offense, the better your defense. It doesn't matter how good your goalie is. Oftentimes, a high overall goalie will underperform. And right now, I mean, when we have a team that's fairly well stacked, it's either one of two things are going to happen. We're going to win a lot of championships, or we're going to have underperforming players. And so far, we've seen the worst of both worlds, as Provorov is not getting the job done by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, God. Let's see. He has two points and is a minus six. Right. It's not like anyone else is really killing it either, but I'm going to go Theodore and Bronstrom as the top pairing for now. It's funny that Gertzen was complaining about ice time when he's a top four defenseman and I'm playing him in the top four, but what are you going to do? It's just how the game works. Uh, let's see here. Norton... Gerritsen at least has the goal. He's played fewer games as well. Rositas, nine penalty minutes. Not overly happy about that. I think I'm going to go Provorov, Norton, Rositas, Gertsen. And we'll see what happens there. Forward-wise, forward-wise, let's... God, what the hell do we even do here? What the hell do we even do here? I think we have to split up that fourth line now. I don't know if I want to just outright reward players off of point totals, but right there, I mean, you want to talk about Cody Glass performing to a high level to potentially stay here? I was happy with Nick Suzuki's regular season numbers. He has been almost non-existent in the playoffs. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. And in fairness, we have three points from Jason Robertson as well. Kind of sucks. Ah, Fotinos hasn't done much either. Just when everybody's underperforming, what changes do you make, right? So, what I think we're going to do is bump down Suzuki, because I'm just not happy with what he's done thus far. Robertson will be on the fourth line. We're going to bump up Verbata and Datsuk to give them a little bit more ice time. We have four points for Roach, and then pretty much three points for everyone else along the way. So, Roach cannot play center. Uh, Dwyer can't, Goldobin can, Fotinos can as can Elijah Lackey. So we have options on that front. It's just who the hell do I want at center? And I honestly don't know. I mean, again, Dwyer, Goldobin. I don't think I want to drop Goldobin. Not too happy about the plus-minus rating. I'm not happy, really, with uh, Tate Dwyer either. Dwyer and Roach, both not exactly killing it. So what I'm thinking here, can Verbata play center? He can't. Right. That's going to uh, that's going to complicate things. I think I know what I'm going to do here, though. I'm going to go Dwyer, Fotinos, Roach, which is still, I mean, in terms of potential offensively, like that's absolutely ridiculous. And I think from there, Lackey can play center. I might, I might put Goldobin on that top unit. That's what I'm going to do. I think. As crazy as this is, Lackey can play center. Verbata, Lackey, Datsuk, Mason, Glasgow, Dobin, Dwyer, Fotinos, Roach, Robertson, Fedorov. And uh, I don't know if I want Suzuki on the right necessarily. I don't. We'll put Robertson on the right wing with his good shooting ability. Defensively, we're pretty much set. We just need our team to start performing like they're capable of performing. And they obviously haven't been doing that for whatever reason. The big loss of Russell Clausen certainly doesn't help. Let's hold a team meeting. What's the worst that could happen? Is there a way for me to just be like, hey, yeah, what happened? I thought I had a great team who thrived under pressure. Was I wrong? Right? Right? Oh, God, the fans are still behind us. They expect big things. They do. 
They do. I think we can pull out of the, You know, I, I do. I think we can get out of the situation. Just start fucking playing like you're capable of playing, and we could be okay. It is game four in Vancouver. This has been one of the longest series thus far already, but it's just, you know, when there's that pressure of seeing your team underperform, and you know you got to get the job done, it's a little bit stressful. First period, though, of game four is scoreless. 11 shots to seven in their favor. Not a great start for us, but it could have been worse. Second period, that is helpful. And that is what we needed to happen oh so desperately. Tate Dwyer gets the opening goal under a minute into the second period. Taylor Hall ties it, but then two goals in 55 seconds from the top line. Mason and Goldobin were being outshot 19-18, but we have the 3-1 to one lead. The offense finally shows up. Three of our biggest players deliver. Thank God. <laughs> but there's still 20 minutes left in regulation. And I don't know how much confidence I have in Andre Vasilevsky right now. We do kill off that penalty, and Nick Suzuki responds to being dropped to the fourth line. He makes it 4-1, to one, and barring a brutal comeback from the Canucks, we are going to tie this series up. It will be a best of three from here on out. Extended power play time that we can't take advantage of to wind down the clock. 4-1 is the final. And again, this series is all tied up at two. Vasilevsky gets the job done. We need more of that from him. Mason with a two-point night. And that is a much better all-around team effort. And exactly what we needed. Russell Clausen goes down. We know that we still had the players that were capable of performing at a high level. And thankfully there they did. Unfortunately, Clausen will not be back for Game 5. It will be May 3rd. He's not going to be back earlier. We're not going to play him through an injury. That would be a terrible idea in terms of making him more susceptible to being re-injured. So the lineups will remain the same. And looking at how they did, I mean, the top line had the two goals. So overall, I'm, I'm feeling good. You had Dwyer, you had Suzuki as well. So that second line was a little bit quiet defensively. How are we looking there? Provorov was at least a plus two in that game. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about these combos. We're only going to be relying on this set of lines for this next game before Claussen's back anyway. So you have some guys who are going to be fighting for ice time here, uh, really fighting for their spot in the lineup because I don't know who I'm taking out. It's not as simple as saying Jason Robertson. And we'll see what happens. Game five, a big, big moment in this series against Vancouver and this series in general. We need a win. God damn. First period. Here on home ice. And we do get the opening goal. It's Maxim Fedorov. So the second line delivers this time out. We were outshot 11-9. But we do have the one to nothing lead. Second period. Vancouver ties it. Taylor Hall. But Goldobin scores again from the Rask spot. That's an old callback. But there we go. We're up 2-1. Slightly outshot. We're 20 minutes away from having a chance to close out this series in Game 6 in Vancouver in Russell Clausen's return. Can we hold on? I'd prefer some more insurance goals. Vassie, I'm not saying I don't trust you, but I kind of don't trust you to get the job done, especially against this high-powered Vancouver offense. Five minutes left. Do we have enough? Is that enough? Come on! Yes! Okay. Whoo boy, we have responded from 2-1 down to 3-2 up with a chance to end this series in Game 6 in Vancouver. Andre Vasilevsky stepping up in a big-time way like we needed him to do. Do we have what it takes to get the job done? We have two games, two opportunities to end this series. Russell Clausen is back, which is big news for us. Uh, the Capitals will be in the Eastern Conference Final. They'll play either Buffalo or Tampa. Chicago has the 3-2 to two series lead on Arizona. But let's get this lineup. Let's get this lineup set. Robertson, two assists in two games. Oh, boy. In fairness, Suzuki's up to four points now. I think, man. Roach doesn't have a single point in this episode today. 
Cortinos at least has two assists. I think Dwyer only has one point. Elijah Lackey hasn't done much. But Roach only having, or Roach not having a point in this series is insane. Absolutely insane. So I don't know if I want to drop Robertson. For game six, I'm going back to the lineup that got us here. If we lose, then someone like Gregory Roach will be taking a seat for Robertson if he does not do anything in this next game. So we'll go back to the old reliable setup. We'll see if we can get the win. If not, mix and match lines for game seven just to try and get us over the line and to get us the win. So it will be Mason, Glass, and Claussen. Dwyer with Goldobin and Lackey. Fotino, Suzuki, Roach. Frabata, Fedorov, Datsuk. Defensively. Defensively, though, I'm not as sold on just being like, oh, yeah, let's reunite because Provorov has been arguably our weakest defenseman. You still have Rositas as well that I'm not overly sold on. So what I think I'm going to do is potentially the same setup. We had before. Gertzen has one point and is a plus three. Rositas has one point and is a plus one. But again, for Rositas, it's the penalty minutes I'm a little bit concerned about. Norton hasn't been too bad. Plus minus for Provorov has been a little bit concerning. Who has the better shot there? It's definitely Shea Theodore. Definitely Shea Theodore. Rositas and Gertzen. I think I'm going to go with that. I think I'm going to go with that. And if we look at Andre Vasilevsky up to a 926, much better. We're at full strength. Does this team have what it takes to get the job done right here and right now in Game 6? Can we end this series and punch our ticket to the Western Conference Final? Our fans have never been more excited because the sponsors are excited, which means I'm excited, which means you're excited, everyone's excited. Oh, boy. Let's do it. Do it for the fans. There we go. Do it for the fans, damn it. Come on. We got this. We got this. Game 6 in Vancouver. Can we end things right here and right now? Let's go. First period. And that is a pretty brutal start. Two goals in 31 seconds for Lyndon Hall. Ten shots to seven. Down two to nothing. Not great. Can we start to dig ourselves out of this in the second period? Suzuki gets the goal. Pablo Beagle makes it 3-1. to one. <sighs> Third period. Is there a comeback on the cards? Or are we going back home for a Game 7? Not the greatest performance from Vasilevsky that we could have used. Power play chance. Hall scores. And that's it. A uninspired, frankly not that great performance at all. <laughs> How brutal do you want to be about it? Let's just hit the button. 5-1 final. Five goals given up by Vasilevsky in an elimination game. Only one goal on 31 shots for the offense. Four-point night for Pablo Beagle, their top center. And it comes down to a seventh game. Which, you know, I'm not surprised... But I am somewhat disappointed in terms of a team meeting. What the hell do you want me to say? I'm fucking pissed off that we've even gotten to this point. Oh, don't get flustered. Just execute. That's, that's indeed what it is. Just get the goddamn job done. We know we're a good enough team. I need to look. If Gregory Roach doesn't have a point, he's sitting for the seventh game. He has to. He has one point. Datsuk has six points at this point. Four points for Fedorov. Four points for Verbata. Roach is going to get dropped to that fourth line in favor of Kirill Datsuk. You have Suzuki, Fotinos, who haven't exactly been killing it. And then Lackey, Goldobin, and Dwyer have been super disappointing. Super disappointing. But it's like, you know, I, I'm not going to go insane by being like, fuck it, Rizzi, Membridge, Robertson in the lineup. I want to, but that's probably a good way to shoot ourselves in the foot. That said, something needs to change. I'm not sure what that is. Honestly, Mason Glass Goldobin was doing very well for us, and I think that's what's going to change. And I think between Dwyer, Klassen, and Lackey, 
Dwyer or Claussen's probably the best center. But he also has the best shot. He's been, you know what? I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop Russell down to that second line to center Dwyer and Lackey. And I think that might be our way out of this. Mason Glass, Goldobin, Fotino, Suzuki, Datsuk, Verbata, Fedorov, and Roach. Defensively, defensively, it's a tough one where that second unit hasn't exactly been getting it done. I think what we're going to do is split up the uh, main three here, Provorov, Theodore, and Bronstrom, who's done the best out of this. Rositas, I'm just worried about the penalty minutes more than anything. So he's going to be on the third pairing. Gertsen has one point and a plus three. Norton has one point and a plus two. I think it's going to be Provorov, Gertsen, Theodore, Norton, Rositas with Bronstrom. We'll have Bronstrom on the right-hand side just because he's a better shot. The goaltender is Andre Vasilevsky with a 9-19. That's not good enough. Vasi, I think if you lose this series, you're done. That might be... That might be harsh because we don't necessarily have the go-to backup plan, but I think it would be necessary. We need to win. There's no excuse here. There is no excuse. This team's good enough to win. It's just whether or not they execute and whether or not that roll of the dice goes our way. You can talk about team balancing and all that. It all comes down to the random number generator, the RNG. RN Jesus, is he on our side? Let's find out. Game 7, here on home ice. Are we going to the Western Conference Final, or are we crashing and burning out of the playoffs? First period, and it's one goal apiece. Maxim Fedorov, Bo Horvat responds with 39 seconds left. We have the slight edge in shots. It's one all. It's going to be a very big second period. Here we go. There we go. Come on. Kirill Datsuk, 25 shots to 21, 2-1 two to one lead on the board. A huge goal for Datsuk, who has been one of the surprise performers of this playoff run thus far. Third period, can we hold on? Can Vasilevsky shut the door? Can we find some insurance? Power play chance, extended power play chance. We at least kill time off the clock. Nine minutes left. Can we hold on? Five minutes, Taylor Hall scores. Taylor Hall scores. Two minutes, 55 seconds left. Oh, God, we have to jump into it. It's the way it works. 99 verse 94, 97 verse 95, 94 verse 88. It comes down to this. It comes down to this. Will Game 7 go to overtime? Will there be a late winner? How the hell is this going to play out? That is the question. <sighs> There's only one way to find out now, isn't there? Game 7 here on home ice. One ten on the clock. It ends up rounding up a little bit. As we win the draw, Norton finds Kirill Datsuk. Suzuki for Fontino! <laughs> A broken play! And with 102 remaining, Josh Fotinos has scored the goal that may send us to the conference final. A broken play on a pass by Datsuk Suzuki to a wide open Fotinos. Just like that, as we get a look at absolutely nothing. Wonderful replay there. Mason Glass and Goldobin are out. The extra time that ends up back on the clock proves to be beneficial. It's top line v top line with one minute to go. Can Fotinos' goal stand up as the winner? Lind in front for Beagle gets broken up. Here's Goldobin. He gets hit hard off the puck. Olya Levy has it in the neutral zone. Bo Horvat over the line. 47 to go. Empty net for Vancouver. Horvat still battling. Finds Lind. Beagle and a save by Vasilevsky. We have some we have on occasion sat sometimes through two overtimes. We get a goal nearly immediately with Fotinos. 
Hall, Pedersen, and Dahlin are out there. Our top line still defending us. Uh, an offensive zone draw one. I'm so nervous for this. Cole the shot. Save by Vasilevsky. He plays it out for Provorov, who turns it over to Del Cole. Dahlin around the back finds Hall. In front for Pedersen. Shot and save. Loose puck. Hall stopped again by Vasilevsky. 24.6 to go. A set of huge saves for Andre Vasilevsky after the mistake by Provorov. Really the mistake by Vasilevsky playing it out in the first place. Dwyer, Klassen, and Lackey are out. Can Russell win this draw? He cannot. Another zone, offensive zone draw won by Vancouver. Here's Yolevi for Hall. Finds Dahlin, Pedersen to the point. Vancouver looking for a shooting lane. Only Yolevi, it gets broken up. Hall recovers but is slashed, I believe, by Russell Klassen. Klassen goes to the box with 10.8 remaining. As he stops Taylor Hall, albeit illegally. <sighs> Verbata and Suzuki are out. Can Nick Suzuki win this draw against Elias Pedersen? He cannot. Hall for Pouliot. One-timer stopped by Vasilevsky. It nearly snuck through the five hole. 6.6 .6 left. Oh my god. Can we get a defensive zone win, please? Suzuki gets it. It's around the back of the Knights net. Theodore can't get it out. Taylor Hall for Pedersen back for Hall and it's over. Josh Fotinos with the series winning goal. It took seven games. But the Golden Knights have survived this battle of the Titans. We will be playing either Chicago or Arizona in the conference final. I did see which. An unreal series that sees Josh Fotinos get the win, that sees Vasilevsky stand on his head at the end of the game to get the win. Brick wall Vasilevsky, not quite, but here it was. Suzuki for Fotinos. The snipe looked like it was under the blocker. The biggest goal of his young career. Oh my God. 32 save effort for Vasilevsky. 39 shots to 34 in our favor. 3 to 2 final. Fotinos and Suzuki. Two points each. And the Vegas Golden Knights are going to the Western Conference Final. All of the teams that we've had, as we will be playing Chicago, by the way, but all of the teams that we have had, this is the one to finally get to the Conference Final. I believe we're there for the first time. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's, let's go with... Uh, Let's go with let's go with that one. And then, okay, they don't they don't like motivation. That's fine. I was gonna say what we've done so far isn't enough, and it probably isn't. I don't know what the hell we're going up against. It's New Jersey and Tampa. It's not. It's uh, Tampa and Washington. My bad. Uh, in the Eastern Conference Final, we will be playing Chicago. We have home ice advantage. Needless to say, lineup wise, we have some options, especially with some underperforming players. Uh, let me know your thoughts on what we should look to do with this team. Uh, like I said, quite a few options. But despite all the stress, we get the outcome that we wanted. We're going to the conference final. We'll be playing Chicago in the next episode. I need a nap. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. You know the deal. As always, support the video, support the channel. Helps me out in all the algorithms and helps make sure that YouTube actually can tell you when I upload videos, which is always nice. Oh, God, we beat Vancouver. <laughs> we beat Vancouver.